Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. So today I was going to do uh, a end of the year previews episode. I was looking through the previews catalog and found a lot of stuff that I was interested in and thought I would just talk about with you. And just as I sat down on the computer to record this episode, I checked Twitter as I usually do before I do anything really just to see what was going on in the comic book world. And lo and behold, I see a tweet from Gail Simone announcing that she will no longer be the writer on Batgirl. And while that's sad, because I I really appreciate and uh, respect Gail Simone as a writer, a creator, uh, she's known for her work on the Barbara Gordon character, and with the New 52, with Barbara Gordon coming back to be Batgirl, it made a lot of sense that uh, that Gail Simone would be that person to uh, herald that return of the character to the tights. So I've been enjoying that book, um, and so I'm sad to see that, that Gail Simone won't be continuing as the writer. However, it's the there's a couple other things that were said. Um, during this announcement, and uh, the, the the first one being that the new Batgirl editor Brian Cunningham informed Gail by email, which you know that's you know, there's been some responses to that. You know, it, it's it's uh, it's kind of a and this is my words, not somebody else's, but it's kind of a dick move. Uh, I'm a manager in the in the job that I have, and. I would never inform anybody by email that they were their the job was changing or that they were losing their job for that matter. Um, so you know, I, you know, that's that. I guess uh, it was not a, a cool thing in my opinion, but uh, I guess in the, in the corporate world, these things happen sometimes. Uh, but then, more interesting to me, and I, and I don't know anything yet because I'm following this. This was this literally this just happened like within the last half an hour uh, before I push the record button. Uh, but at uh, about 15 minutes later, Mike Nelson responded back to Gail saying, did you not put enough women in refrigerators or something? And then Gail re- responded uh, to Mike saying, funny you should say that. And that's all that's been said so far about that. Um, I... <laughs> I can only take Gail at her word here, uh, and you know we can make a lot of assumptions. But you know, considering that this whole women in peril thing has come up many times in comics, and especially at DC Comics, it seems. Uh, I, I I really hope it's not true, but you know I, I can, like I said, I can take Gail at her word, and so I uh, can just assume that there's some truth to this matter to the to this thought that's been put out by Mike Nelson um and that just that just sickens me if 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 she's being told that and again I, I'm making lots of assumptions here I don't know anything besides what I've just uh, blurted out but if 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 there was a push by editorial to you know put Batgirl more in peril or to show female characters um as need to be rescued or or whatnot, I, I I don't get it. Uh, good storytelling doesn't come from having a damsel in distress at each and every issue, and I just that's just that's just horrible, and and uh, I feel bad for for Miss Simone, and I wish her well. Uh, I know she will, you know, she she'll go on to do some something else, and it'll be fantastic and wonderful, uh, as is just about everything that she does that I've read. So, um, well, I guess, I guess that's all I'll say on the matter. Uh, for now, I just, it it was just weird that I, I, I go to start to record this episode and, and there's this news and it's disappointing and, um, I feel kind of down now. I almost don't even want to do I was looking, really looking forward to doing this episode uh, uh, about previews because I was excited about all the stuff that was in it, and then, and now I'm, I'm feeling kind of feeling kind of down. So now I'm wondering, you know, should I go ahead and continue with this episode, even though I don't, you know, 
my heart's kind of not into it. And, and you know, and, and my, my look at, at new comics and other things coming out that's comic book related or uh, is, is, am I detracting from this, this, this bad news that I, I, that I feel about in the way that I do? I don't know. These are things that are going through my head. I'm just kind of blurting them out there. I'm sorry. Um, I think I need to step away for a second, and I'm, I'm sure I'll be back, but I need to I need to stop. Okay, I'm back. So in today's show, um, like I mentioned earlier, I, I am gonna I am gonna go ahead and go in, uh, go into the previews um, for December, the last of the year, for things that are uh, shipping mostly in February. And there's lots of good stuff in here, so I wanted to just uh, put out a last show of the year and have it be a previews episode. And you know, maybe there's some things in here. Uh, that I mentioned that might be some nice gifts for the people that you love or just, you know, gifts for yourself. Treat yourself for an end-of-the-year um, situation, I guess. Uh, but first, I wanted to have a few announcements. I wanted to get to those. Um, I got a new uh, voicemail number. Um, new, that makes it sound like I had one and now I have another one, but that's not true. I have a voicemail number now, I should say. Uh, that people can contact me, and um, you know, if if you're more on the uh, verbal side of communication, <laughs> then you can uh, contact me uh, using this. It's a voicemail only number, so you know, you know, you're not gonna awkwardly get me on the phone and and uh, intending to leave a message, and and you know, when I say hello, and you're like, um, um, I, it's just voicemail only, like I said. Anyway, so if you want to give me uh, contact me that way, the number is two zero eight. Nine five three, one eight four one. So uh, please leave me feedback there. You can also, of course, leave me feedback at the usual in the usual ways uh, via email, which is longboxreview at gmail dot com, or on Twitter. Um, I have a Facebook page, um, or you can leave messages on the blog itself for any posting that I have. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Please, please contact me. I, I, I'd really like to hear the voicemails. That'd be really cool. Of course, um, I'll put them on the, the podcast as well. And also, I wanted to mention, I got a lot of feedback just recently. It's really strange. Uh, there is a there is a post I did back in April. It was a review of the we- website mycomicshop.com. So this, yeah, so this was back in April that I did this, and I just received within the last oh few months, but but uh, some more recent comments in the last month uh, about this from people who have used the service as well, and there's some <laughs> there's some uh, interesting experiences. I'll I'll just say that uh, I. I glad that I have not received that kind of customer service, I guess, is what I'll say. Uh, If you want to read the comments, um, you can go to uh, longboxreview.wordpress.com and search for the review of mycomicshop.com from back in April. Uh, But but I wanted to just mention out that Gary, uh, Rex, and Frank, uh, I appreciate the feedback very much, and I hope that uh, things improve uh, if you do use that site. Uh, or if not, you know, there's other sites out there. You know, go use them. Uh, but again, I'm glad I'm, I, I I missed out on that kind of uh, service from the website. Anyway, so I just wanted to acknowledge the the feedback I got. I really appreciate that. It's nice to hear, um, e- even if things are you know critical of of a, a service that I uh, have reviewed on the site. Uh, you know, it's good to hear that kind of stuff just to get the balanced view. Uh, just because I had a couple good experiences doesn't mean that every every time uh, the service is excellent. Uh, it's good to hear that kind of stuff just so that you can judge uh, whether or not you want to use that service. So I uh, appreciate the comments, comments guys. All right. Um, 
Well, let's step into it, look at previews for December. And uh, first of all, in the book, when I get through, uh, I start paging through it, I see the free comic book day stuff already starting. Uh, free comic book day being uh, in May on May 4th in 2013. And I, I don't know, may, I've just, like I said, there was a lot of stuff in this previews, and I see the free comic book day stuff. I'm like, I just start seeing all these things. Maybe it's, you know, the holidays are coming up, and I'm thinking along those lines. Uh, although now that I think about it, uh, now that I've actually said it that way and thinking about it, it sounds rather selfish. Uh, but there are lots of things that I want, and I'm sure that you might want them too. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> I'll just skip right over that. We'll get to the stuff. So uh, uh, the free Comic Book Day t-shirts that uh, I, I, I kind of want one of these now. I don't know why, just because free Comic Book Day, I like to promote comic books, of course. That's why I do the podcast. That's why I do the blog. Um so I thought, you know, it would be kind of nice to get the free comic book day t-shirt. And it's the, the black one with the generic logo. You know, it's, it's only uh, 8 to $9 depending on your size. You know, that would be a nice little thing. You know, they have a hat as well. They have a book bag or a shopping bag, I should say. Um, a canvas shopping bag for $5. You know, carry your comics in that. That would be great, right? Get your, get your groceries, uh, whatever. Uh, but the other the other T-shirt that I wanted to mention too is, the, of course, near and dear to my heart because it features the Justice League as drawn by Jim Lee. Uh, but this is uh, let's see, it comes in blue, black, and white, and you can spend fifteen dollars up to eighteen dollars for that shirt. So I kind of want that one too, just because I like the Justice League, of course. Okay, uh, I move on to Dark Horse and. Uh, the, uh, solicited here in the December issue of previews is the answer number two. And I mention that only because I did order number one. I decided to pick up a few of uh, Dark Horse's miniseries that were announced last month in previews, but I just wanted to mention those. And the answer uh, is one of those. And I have a note here asking myself, did I order number one? Which I think I did, and I hope I did. If I don't, if I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure to uh, remedy that, but this is by uh, Mike Norton, uh, Dennis Hopeless, and Mike Englert. So I'm looking forward to that. It's, it, you know, it, it kind of looks. Ho I have to admit, it kind of looks hokey. It's it's a it's a guy dressed in tights with a, a full headed mask, with a uh, a big white exclamation mark on his uh, face. So, but but it's written by Mike Norton, so um, it's got to be at the very least interesting so I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to reading that picking that up uh next in dark horses solicitations here dark horse presents number 21 now i don't actually get dark horse presents i did get it for a few months um and i decided that uh I, for eight dollars and for what i was getting um it wasn't quite for me plus the the, th the stuff that interested me in dark horse presents they were collecting and putting out as zero issues and then coming out with, um, you know, the miniseries or their ongoings. Uh, Ghost, for example, is one thing that they did that with. But I see here in Dark Horse Presents number 21 that uh, Neil Gaiman is teaming up with Paul Chadwick for uh, a story, The Day the Saucers Came. So, uh, it being Neil Gaiman, and I do like Paul Chadwick's work, uh, but uh, it's, you know, Sorry, Paul, but it's Neil Gaiman. If he's doing a story in here, um, I might just have to pick that, uh, pick up number 21 and, and however many issues they're going to do that story just because I like Neil Gaiman. So there you go. Name brand does have uh, a bit of a pull, at least with me. Uh, speaking of name brands, there is uh, Michael A. Von Emmings. The Victories continues in Dark Horse Presents. So there was the, the Victories miniseries that he did, which I am I am getting and reading and actually quite enjoying. Uh, so I'm really... Uh, I, I, I'd like to see more of that stuff. Um, not that I would pick up Dark Horse Presents just to get that, but uh, it is worth noting that uh, the more Victories information, more story is coming in Dark Horse Presents number 21. Just as I did, just as I mentioned, the answer before as something that I had already ordered from last month. Uh, I want to mention as well, I'm, I'm now picking up Mind Management by Matt Kint. Uh, number eight is solicited here in the December previews, but I did start with uh, number seven uh, from last month. 
I've just been hearing that it's been a, a good series. I didn't, for some reason, I just didn't pick up uh, number one. Um, but I see here that volume one hardcover uh, featuring Mind Management 1 through 6 is being solicited as well as number eight. Uh, I don't know that I'll get the hardcover, but uh, I, if I don't, if I can't find the the floppies uh, one through six, then I'll then I may pick up the trade paperback down the road, depending on how much I like this. Uh, Matt Kent has not always been uh, someone that I have enjoyed everything, uh, but I did uh, pick up his what was it uh, three story? It was that one shot that I think Dark Horse put out um, by Matt Kent. I really enjoyed that. And so when I saw Mind Management, I, I did think about, you know, I should I should probably order this, but I you know, for some reason, like I said, I didn't. Anyway, I'm now picking up, uh, starting with number seven, which is one of those uh, jumping on points they advertise. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that is like. I also get, uh, ordered the Zero issue that they solicited a, a month or two, or I don't know, however, however, however long ago it was. Anyway, looking forward to reading that. I think it's supposed to be uh, catch us up. Um, oh wait, or did I read that? I think I read that already. I, I can't keep it all straight now. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let's move on. Uh, uh, the, I think the rest of what I'm talking about in Dark Horse is stuff that I've already pre-ordered from, from last month. But anyway, I wanted to mention it. Here's another one, The Black Beetle. It's a miniseries, uh, four issues by, uh, friend, is it, is it Francesco? It's Francesco Francavilla, writer and artist. Uh, from what I understand, this this is uh, a labor of love for him, and I read the uh, the little bit. Like I said, I, mean, I got a few issues of Dark Horse Presents there for a while, and uh, I read the Black Beetle story in that, and I enjoyed it. So I decided to pick up the miniseries. And Frank Avila's art, I, I enjoy, and that this this kind of pulpy stuff, uh, you know, works well for him. So again, here's a. a uh, a mini series that I ordered last month, Emily and the Strangers. This is number two of three, but uh, uh, by Rob Rieger, Mariah Huner, the writers, Emily Ivy is the art, and some covers with Buzz Parker on, on covers as well, and Winston Smith doing the variant cover. These just look fun. I, that's all. I just they look like fun, so decided to get it. That's it from Dark Horse. Uh, next up is DC. Considering the stuff I talked about at the top of the episode, now I'm kind of eh towards DC. Um, but you know, that's that's I shouldn't let the acts of a few people affect my love for and excitement about some of these other works. So anyway, more before Watchmen stuff. We got the uh, the Moloch. Two shot, I'll call it. Um, that you know, the expansion of the Before Watchmen series, or or went beyond the initial series that 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 they've been putting out. And here we get a one shot Before Watchmen dollar bill number one by Len Wein and Steve Rude doing the art and cover. So that that's interesting. Uh, get Steve Rude doing that. Um, dollar bill was like a, a one note joke in the Watchmen uh, maxi series from way back when. So. It, be interesting to see what they do with this. Uh, I have not been disappointed with the Before Watchmen stuff. In fact, I've been quite surprised at how good the series are and 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 my enjoyment of them. So we'll see. Um, I, I am starting to wonder though. You know how much are they going to continue to mine Watchmen? Uh, but obviously, it's working for them because they keep expanding it. So anyway, we shall see. Uh, this is what I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Travis and I, on the last episode, talked about this, uh, the variant covers anyway, but Justice League number 1 uh, by Jeff Johns, and art and covers by David Finch. So that's finally solicited, and uh, they have a two-page spread for that, and uh, the second page is showing a couple of the variant covers and talking about how you can get all 52 U.S. flag variants. One for each state, plus Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. And, apparently, you can order a shrink-wrapped pack of the standard edition of Justice League of America No. 1, plus all variant covers, with a suggested retail price of $149.99. Hmm. There is no minimum minimum purchase needed to order these variants. 
So uh, I'm hoping the place that I get my comics, a lot of my comics from, is going to allow... Because I, cause I want to get, because I talked about this on the last show, I want to get the Idaho variant because I'm from Idaho. And yes, you can insert your Idaho jokes here, but, um, you know, I was born and raised here and for better or for worse, you know, I, I, I have a, an affiliation for my state. So anyway, I want to get that. Uh, speaking of Justice League, there are two new series coming out. Uh, Katana, number one, by Anna Sinti and art by Alex Sanchez. Uh, moving on from Birds of Prey, she's going into her own series and also being part of Justice League of America. Uh, I'm not planning on getting that, but because Katana has never been my, one of my favorites. Although I do have to admit, I do enjoy the New 52 version of Katana uh, in both the way that she's being presented and in her look uh, than I did previously back in what was. When did Batman and the Outsiders, the original series, come out that introduced Katana? That was 1983, I want to say. And this is one of those times I should look things up, but I'm not going to. Anyway, uh, the other one is Vibe, number one, uh, written by Andrew Kreisberg with Jeff Johns. It says and Jeff Johns, I should say. Uh, Art by Pete Woods. Um, It's interesting, though. So Katana is just called Katana. But Vibe is called Justice League of America's Vibe. So apparently Katana, maybe because she's been in uh, the New 52 with In Birds of Prey, she has more name presence, perhaps, and Vibe has been dead for a long time. Um, uh, so there you go, I guess. Uh, I have to say, again, like with Katana, uh, now I haven't read Vibe, of course. Um, don't know anything about the character other than the little bit that I read back in the 80s when he was part of the Detroit-era Justice League. Uh, But I really like his new look. This looks pretty cool. So, Oh, and then there was the... If you you watch the DC Nation stuff, uh, there was that... What was it? It was like a two-episode mini thing that they did where Vibe... The featuring Vibe where he did like a breakdancing contest, I want to say. I I can't remember. It's been a while now, but uh, that was the first time I'd seen Vibe in a long time. So that was interesting. Um, let's see. This is a point of contention, I guess. Uh, DC Universe presents number 17, featuring Arsenal and uh, Starfire. Or guest starring Red Hood and Starfire. But, it, but the focus is on Roy, to which I respond with, why is this not part of Red Hood and the Outlaws instead of taking up precious space in DC Universe presents? You know, because the whole point of, at least I thought, the whole point of the DCU Presents was to feature characters that were not as established and didn't have their own books, etc. And yet we get this. Moving on, uh, Earth 2, number 9. I point that out only as a, it's a new story arc that begins with Dr. Fate making his Earth 2 debut. So, looking forward to that. So we go from a debut to a finale of sorts, Action Comics number 17. This is Grant Morrison's final issue, and it's an extra-sized issue of Action Comics. I'm really, really going to miss Grant Morrison doing Superman in Action Comics. Um, I, of course, will give the new creative team uh, a shot, but, um, you know, quite frankly, Grant Morrison was what drew me into Action Comics. So I I'm I don't know that I'll continue with it, although I'm still reading Superman. <laughs> and that has not been on, uh, in, I'll say, in my top tier of books that I read. Um, so we'll see. I, I But I, I have to wonder, you know, I, I like to read Superman stories, but do I need to uh, buy two? And the quick answer is no. So we'll see. Uh, speaking of Grant Morrison leaving, I, I'm not... I can't remember now um, what he said about his last issues for some of these titles he's been writing, but Batman Incorporated number 8 says, Everything Grant Morrison has been planning since the start of Batman Inc. leads to this stunning issue. You must not miss this one. So, uh, is this the last one that he's doing, or no? I don't I don't know. Um, the, the text kind of leads me to believe that, so we'll see. That's been a lot of fun, too. And I can't imagine if DC continues with 
with Batman Incorporated um, that I will continue with it. Uh, again, I don't need to read that many Bat books, and I'm already reading a lot. So that, again, so we're at the end of the year, but we have a bunch of uh, new jumping on points, I'll say, with DC stuff, and Green Lantern number 17 is another one of those. Uh, where we have part one of The Wrath of the First Lantern. So if you've been enjoying Green Lantern, as I have, I know a lot of people don't for some reason. And and when they were talking about uh, uh, the Third Army story arc, a lot of people were like, well, why even bother? People that I read online, anyway. Why even bother with this? Because Johns was already talking about, well, this is this is the stepping stone to the next big arc, which is The Wrath of the First Lantern. But, but that's the point of, of these monthly ongoing stories is that you have one arc, you have another, you have another. It just builds on itself. And why miss a chapter? Why why dismiss a chapter? Just because something else is coming down the road. I, I don't understand that. It's you know, it's just a story. Enjoy the story for what it is. Or or if you're like my buddy Travis, uh you just don't read it. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Beginnings and endings, here here we go with the climax and finale of Rot World and Animal Man and Swamp Thing, number 17. Uh, if, if, if Animal Man, number 17, is the climax to the Rot World story in that book, that means I will stop reading Animal Man. And I know that's heresy to a lot of people, um, but, you know, I, I read the first six issues, I got the annual, and I'm reading the Rot World crossover, and I just don't care about Animal Man. Which is weird because I was a huge Animal Man fan um, way back when, and I just I'm just not feeling it with with this version. So uh, we'll see, I guess. We'll see what happens. Maybe maybe something will change uh, uh, with this climax issue, and we'll see. You know, I'll take a look at the solicitation for Animal Man number eighteen and see. Maybe I'll I'll still pick it up on. I try to keep an open mind about these things, you know, because I love comics. I love DC comics. I love a lot of these characters, so, you know, I, I never say never. Here's another book that I just wanted to mention. Um, I talked about it, I think, last episode with Travis, but uh, Threshold Number 2, written by Keith Giffen. Uh, this has art by Tom Rainey, with a backup story, art with by uh, Mr. Scott Collins, whom I do not care for, and I've said that, and I should stop saying that, but... Um, uh, so I'm, I'm getting the threshold. This is another, a new title that I've added to my pull list just to see what it is. You know, it's got Keith Giffen doing it, so I'm interested. Uh, which leads me to the next Keith Giffen bit, and I did talk about this with Travis last episode, but Legion of Superheroes number 17, uh, Keith Giffen rejoins Paul Levitz uh, on the Legion, um, and the Fatal Five make their deadly intentions known. It says here, Interesting, it says the Legion faces the Fatal Five for the first time. Why do I, why does that not ring true to me? I know it's you know New Fifty Two and New Legion and all that, but as I understood it, uh, and, and you know I did read the first six or so issues of uh, Legion when the New Fifty Two launched, but uh, that's that universe that 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 story didn't really change at all, I think, um, from before the New 52 launched. So, and these Legionnaires seem to be the older version. It wasn't like that when, when Paul Levitz came to the Legion, they, they rebooted the Legion and everything was different again. They started over, you know, like they did, um, way back in the nineties. Uh, so it, Really, this is the first time that the Legion is going up against the Fatal Five, or is, or is this, or is this really just the Fatal Five? We're seeing the Fatal Five for the first time uh, since the New Fifty Two launched. It just that's a weird solicitation bit of text to me, anyway. Uh, and next to that, and I, I wasn't going to mention this before, but I, for some reason I just, I, I just got to say this uh, on the next on the uh, adjoining page to Legion of Superheroes is Teen Titans number seventeen. I only mention it because this this image on here. So has Robin or Red Robin, boy. See, I messed up there. Red Robin, um, but in the in the foreground, but in the background is this bird motif character in a uh, uh, dark blue and gray. It looks like, uh, but there's no there's no mention of who that is. So I'm really curious who that character is. So I guess I have to read number seventeen to find out. Uh, this being December. 
previews for things shipping in February, we get the uh, DC Valentine's Day special. It's Young Romance, a New 52 Valentine's Day special, number one. Um, there's stories in here about the Superman Wonder Woman thing, um, uh, a Batgirl story, Catwoman, Aquaman, Apollo and Midnighter. I'm really interested what they're going to do with that. Uh, anyway, we have Dick Grayson meeting Lucius Fox's daughter. Uh, plus, you get perforated Valentine's Day cards featuring the stars of these stories. Now, okay. Question for you people out there listening to this. If you got this special, would you actually tear out the Valentine's Day cards? Because I would not. I know, I, it's, it runs contrary to, to who I am as a comic book reader and collector to actually take things out of the the bound issue that I have. I guess, is that, is that DC's um, uh, way of getting you to buy multiple copies if you really wanted to, I don't know, get those these Valentine's Day cards and give them to people? I don't know. I, I wouldn't do it, but anyway. Uh, for DC Trades, um, if you haven't jumped on the bandwagon with Scott Snyder's Batman you can start with the, the trade paperback of the Court of Owls, which collects Batman 1 through 7. Um, I highly recommend it. In the DC Trade What the Heck Department, um, Day of Judgment trade paperback for $15 collects the Day of Judgment miniseries 1 through 5 and Day of Judgment Seeker Files. Now, what's funny about this is that I just recently was able to buy all those issues. Um, but what I was hoping to get was a trade of it, and yet here it is. So anyway, I got the issues. It doesn't matter. I have it now, but it's just what, why are they doing this? Why are they um, soliciting this? And it's for the first time. It's the first time they've collected this. So, um, I mean, this is published in 1999. Why now? It's it, Considering the New 52 focus, It's to me it's been strange that uh, some of these things that they are soliciting as trades... Um, I, I'm just trying to figure out what the plan is here. Why do that? Uh, speaking of that, Batman Gotham by Gaslight, the new edition trade paperback, which features the classic Gotham, Gotham by Gaslight story, which was awesome. If you've not read that, you really should. If you've not read that and you like alternate history Batman stories, you should definitely read this story. It's excellent. Um, uh, but it also includes the Master of the Future, which is kind of a, a sequel to... Um, the Gotham by Gaslight, Gotham, <laughs> Gotham by Gaslight. Um, so yeah, Victorian era Batman was just that was just so cool when that first came out. Uh, DC Universe by Alan Moore trade paperback. Uh, as much as I dislike Alan Moore, um, as as a, a as a person who says things out loud, um, his his writing is spectacular. I have to, I, you know, I I can't. I can't dismiss that. Um, and so you get all this stuff from him, which they seem to be doing a lot of Alan Moore trade stuff over the last few years, I've noticed. Um, I guess, well, you know, he, he, he I go, go back to the, what I said earlier about name recognition. You know, he definitely has has the name, one of the names in comics. So, and they have every right, DC has every right to publish this stuff again. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. I, in fact, I may just get this because there's a lot of these things that I have not read. And like I said, I, I like his work. Um, uh, the next thing I wanted to point out, and I only pointed out because Peter Rios on the Daily Rios mentioned this on his um, his previews episode. Uh, but Martial Law, the deluxe edition hardcover, written by Pat Mills, aren't covered by Kevin O'Neill. And just based on uh, Peter's description of this, uh, I, I want to read this now. So anyway, you should go listen to Peter's episode. Um, by the time you hear this, it probably be a week or so old, uh, so you can find it that way. Uh, but go check that out, and you can, you can, uh, your mind can be swayed uh, by listening to the sultry sounds of Mr. Rios. Uh, next on the list here, uh, just because I love this this comic and always have, always will probably, the New Teen Titans. This is the Omnibus Volume 3 hardcover. I have the Volume 1, and I hope to get the Volume 2 very soon, it being near Christmas and all. 
and of course I want to get volume 3 and this collects uh, this actually starts the New Teen Titans the Baxter run uh, volume 2 I guess if you want to call it that too uh, with uh, the return of Trigon uh, that was on the, the nice the, like I said the Baxter paper is what they called it that's why we call them the Baxter editions uh, but uh, Teen Titans 1 through 6 and a bunch of other things so uh, good stuff that was and I don't know if I'll be getting this because well I probably will just to complete complete the the runs and plus I I haven't read all of these issues but um, last year or the Christmas before I can't remember now um, my wife surprised me with a bunch of crisis on multiple multiple Earths trades <laughs> I have one through five yes one through five and I just recently got through them all. In the last month or so, and here we have in previews the volume six trade paperback, which collects JLA 195 through 197, 207 through 209, and 219 to 220. And the I believe it was was it 195 or 196? I can't remember now. I think it was 196. I actually got that issue off off the shelves when it was first published, and I spent years trying to find the first and third parts. And I found, eventually found the third part. Um, I never was able to get a hold of the first part, if memory serves. I have read it. I mean, I did, uh, Comixology did a, um, did a sale on Justice League of America stuff, so I was able to buy it and read it for, you know, 99 cents an issue. So I, I, so I got the whole story, but, you know, I, I have all the other volumes. I might as well get this one, and I think I'll be done with the, um, multiple Earth crises stories after this. Uh, I wanted to mention, um, again, like I said before, there are lots of be jumping on or beginning points and lots of finales uh, this month, it seems, and this is no exception. Young Justice number 25 um, is the final issue of that series, which that's too bad. You know, I, I, I started getting it um, shortly before the story arc before they they moved the comic into the invasion the five years later bit because um, I wanted I wanted more young justice I love that show uh, and I can't wait for it to come back stupid scheduling I don't know what the hell was going on with that um, but I can't wait for that to come back I have the the season DVDs that have been released uh, I'll get the rest of them when they come out because this show is just awesome in fact Travis and I were talking about this at lunch last week, I believe it was, and we were talking about how, you know, they should make that the Young Justice universe. They should, they should, that's what, that's what the DCU should be. Or was it Travis or somebody else? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but, you know, that stuff is just really cool. I'm really sad to see this go. Um, you know, it's it's not quite the same as watching the, the, the TV show, but, you know, it's a, it was a nice substitute for it. Uh, as Travis and I talked about last episode, here it is, solicited. Hellblazer number 300, the final issue. Yeah, that's too bad. And, you know, I I say that it's part of, you know, it's I'm probably part of the problem, the fact that it, it's going away. You know, if sales were really good, I imagine that they would continue on with it. I was not reading this. In fact, I was planning on, as I mentioned last episode, I was planning on jumping on to Hellblazer yet again because uh, I've been off and on with Hellblazer over the years, but with number 300, I was going to start reading Hellblazer again at number 300. Um, so, you know, here we go. Uh, I feel bad that I, you know, I wasn't supporting it because I, I knew it was good. Um, it's just one of those things that I didn't have on my pull list for some reason. So let that be a lesson. Uh, it's a lesson for me. I'm, uh, I'm looking at the things that uh, I, I hear are good, and, um, you know, I'll be signing up for those. Uh, here's another trade. We're into the Vertigo section now, of course. Um, Joe the Barbarian trade paperback. Uh, this was, uh, this was written by Grant Morrison with Sean Murphy on art. Uh, collecting the eight-issue miniseries. Uh, I was, this was recommended to me by um, a guy at, at the comic shop that I buy from when it first came out. And I just didn't get into it, that first issue. And then I started hearing things about the the series as as the months went on, and and then realized you know I missed out. I should have I should have uh, got on board when uh, Matt told me to. 
Uh, so I've been waiting for a trade of this, and here it is. So I will be ordering that. And finally, from DC, well, I've been talking a lot about DC, or uh, talking a long time about DC. Um, here is the Batman Arkham City Series 4 action figures, and I only mention that because there's a Nightwing in it, and I, you know, I love Nightwing. And, and it's, it's Nightwing with the, the blue instead of the New 52 red version, so. Um, they are $23 each. Hmm. It'd be kind of cool to have the Batman and Nightwing. The Deadshot one that they show, he's, it's interesting. Now, I have not, I have Arkham City. I've only played a tiny bit of it because I haven't finished Arkham Asylum. And I know you're thinking, wow, what, what a dummy, you should get into that. But um, anyway, the, the Deadshot is, his look is really interesting. It's not the, it's not the Deadshot that I'm familiar with from uh, Suicide Squad and, and all that. And, and I'm not talking about the New 52 version, I'm talking about the other version. But um, interesting looking. All right, on to IDW. Uh, I just want to mention for the fans of this, I know there's a lot of people out there that really like the Ghostbusters stuff. This is the new Ghostbusters number one. Uh, it's an ongoing, so if you like Ghostbusters, there you go. And we also have the Rocketeer Hollywood Horror number one. This is written by Roger Langridge, uh, J Bone on art, Walt Simonson doing a cover, and that. Reminds me that I should have mentioned the creative team on the new Ghostbusters, which was Eric Burnham writing, Dan Schoening, uh, and Burnham on art, and Schoening doing the uh, all four covers. So anyway, there you go. Um, so is this, uh, back to the Rocketeer, is this, I don't know is it, if it's a, I can't tell if it's a one-shot or if it's a, a new ongoing. See, that. I wish they would do that. I wish I wish the publishers would be. I've said this before, but I wish they would be, a, you know, more consistent about indicating what things are. You know, you can throw a number one on anything, a one shot or a mini or an ongoing. So you know, tell me what it is. Tell me if I want to. And maybe that's why they don't, because you know, if it's an ongoing, maybe I'm not as likely to pick it up. But if it's a mini series, I might. Or if it's a one shot, I I might. You know, but I don't know. I I just wish they. I just wish they'd do it. More licensed product from IADW, Doctor Who, and Star Trek. I just want to mention the Doctor Who Prisoners of Time, the 12 issue maxi series, um, is solicited. Uh, I'm picking that up. I, that's one of those ones where I, I pre uh, pre ordered it last month, and here's number two. So I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, and the same goes for Star Trek Countdown to Darkness, which is a mini series, number two of four. And this is a, a lead up to the next summer's Star Trek movie, which, by the way, have you seen the, well, I guess they're calling it, I don't know if it's a teaser trailer officially, or uh, I did see a, a reference to it as an, as an announcement trailer. Um, uh, so I watched that online a few days ago, and oh my god, I cannot wait to watch this movie. Cannot wait. And, and I showed my daughter, who is um, not a Star Trek fan, but she's a Chris Pine fan. <laughs> and... Uh, She's now looking forward to watching that as well. She did like the Star Trek film, though. She, I, I've tried, tried my best to turn her turn her into a geek, um, but she's only just um, enjoyed the th watching the things with me. Um, so there you go. So how many of you out there had read the Kill Shakespeare stories uh, that were put out by IDW before? Um, if you did and like them, here is Kill Shakespeare, The Tide of Blood, new miniseries, one of five, by Connor McCreary and Anthony DeCall, with Andy Ballinger doing art and cover. Um, I will not be getting this. Uh, I did get the first two trades of Kill Shakespeare, and it was okay. Uh, nothing, you know, it was, it was people were, were billing it as the fables for the Shakespeare crowd. And while, while there are obvious comparisons to it, um, I mean, the idea was interesting. Uh, I have to admit, and being a uh, a literature major, and I've read a lot of Shakespeare, uh, and I appreciate Shakespeare's work. You know, I I I did appreciate the Kill Shakespeare story to a certain degree, but it it did not really grab me that that much. So I won't be returning to that world. But you might like to. On to Image Comics. This next this is a mini series by Jimmy Robinson, Five Weapons, uh, one of five. 
I think I'd seen something about this. I can't remember where. But anyway, I just kind of ignored it. But then I was listening to a podcast recently, and man, I want to say it was Fight for Comics podcast, I think, maybe. Or maybe it was a short box podcast. I can't remember now. It was one of those, I believe. But they, they mentioned the five weapons and uh, so I decided when I saw the solicitation here in previews, I'd check it out. And I'm actually, now I, I kind of want to read it. Um, it says here, 13-year-old Tyler finds himself in a specialized school where assassins send their kids for education and training in one of the five deadly weapons. Tyler doesn't have a weapon or any fighting skills, but he still plans to graduate by beating every weapon master in the school because he has a powerful ability that nobody can match, his razor-sharp mind. And the preview art here, the the four pages they show, um, look pretty good. I'm I'm really interested in this. So it's five only five issues. Uh, also, that looks interesting. And this is just you, you see some preview art here, and that's all you see is there's no, it's not uh, there's no there's no dialogue, no word balloons or anything, no captions. But Ravine, Volume One. And, oh my god, I was going to look up how to pronounce this this uh, creator's name before I started recording, and I didn't. Uh, I'm just going to spell his last name. I assume it's a him. S-E-J-I-C. Sejic. Sejic. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the first name, so I apologize for that. Uh, but it's a fantasy thing. It just the art alone just looks interesting. It looks really good. Son of Merlin, number one, by Robert Napton. Art by Zid. I've never heard of Zid. Have you? Who? who what does Zid do? Uh, anyway, it's... Uh, I mentioned because it it's a science and magic collision type piece, uh, and it's for $1. $1 for 32 pages. So if you like that whole science magic mishmash, there you go for $1. Uh, and the art looks pretty good. I like it. Uh, let's see, in the, the portion of uh, image, the backlist spotlight, they have a bunch of trades here. Danger Club Volume 1 being one of them, $10.00. Uh, Hell Yeah, Volume 1, Last Day on Earth trade, $10, which I think I'll order that. Saga, Volume 1, trade paperback, $10. And my god, if you haven't been reading Saga, you've been waiting for the trade, get it. it it's worth it. Uh, Manhattan Projects, Volume 1, trade paperback, Science Bad is oh, $15. Interesting. Why is it $15? Hmm. Anyway, that's that's been a good series, too. I plan to review that more in depth later. Uh, here's a sad note. Um, creator own heroes number nine, uh, solicited here in this month's previews, but yet the news just came out recently that creator owned heroes number eight will be the final issue of that series, which is really too bad. I've enjoyed the, the, the comic work in it. Um, and especially the articles, the interviews that they did, uh, it, it was a really interesting experiment and I wished more people uh, would have been buying it to keep it around for much longer. Alright, on to Marvel where we get the, one of the first things in the book is Guardians of the Galaxy 0 0.1 which is the well at least it's not a you know a zero issue it's a point one issue but you know we get the Guardians of the Galaxy preview I guess before the, the series starts proper. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis is writer, Steve McNiven doing the art. I'll probably check that out. Nova number one by Jeff Loeb and Ann McGinnis. I have no interest in that. Interest in that. I really like the Nova character, and I really liked liked what they did with the Nova character during the Annihilation Saga. Uh, but this is a new guy, a new kid. So they're they're you know trying to bring in a, a younger character, maybe capture a younger audience. I guess Nova was kind of supposed to be like you know Spider Man again in uh, when he first premiered. You know, to try and capture that 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 youth audience, the a new superhero coming into his own, you know, that kind of. Thing. So I think they're trying to do that again with Nova Number One. Anyway, we'll see. Um, if it turns out to be good, like a book I'm going to talk about here in a minute, uh, you know, I'll kick myself and and try and read up on it. So I tweeted last week, I think it was, that I had read the all-new X-Men, and if you've listened to the show when Travis and I were talking about the Marvel Now stuff, uh, he made a point of talking about how they were not all-new X-Men, they were the old X-Men, um, uh, uh, which was 
that was fun, a fun conversation, but I did pick up all new X-Men number one and two. And it was an interesting story uh, so far. Uh, I'm not convinced that I'll continue with it. I need to get the number three issue and we'll see. But what I've heard and what I want to talk about here specifically is Uncanny X-Men number one uh, by Brian Michael Bendis and Chris uh, Bacello doing the art. This is, uh, well, it says here the true flagship book of the X-Men Returns. Okay, so I have to, I just have to say the true flagship book. What about all those other X-Men books? That's kind of a diss to them, I think. I know, you know, flagship, it's, it's kind of a slap in the face to all the other books and creators behind those books, I, I kind of think. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, so this is this is the Cyclops that killed Professor X. Whoops! Uh, if you've not read or not keeping up on uh, what happened with Avengers vs. X Men, there you go. That was the big thing. Um, he is uh, teaming up with Emma Frost, Magneto, and Magic, and they're gathering up the New Mutants uh, around the world to indoctrinate them. I guess, um, considering what Scott Summers viewpoint is now uh, but I, I, I'm interested in this uh, in the sense of the, the the one thing out of Avengers vs. X-Men that I actually liked and I know a lot of people don't but what I liked was for good or bad they, they put Scott Summers in that position where he was you know the quote unquote bad guy and yes he did supposedly kill Professor X during this whole thing but the thing that I found really interesting about that story was the end where they had captured Scott and talking to him, basically, you know, why did you do this? You know, he, he was not repentant and I'm glad they didn't do that. And now I see why they didn't because they were going to continue his story here in uncanny X-Man. And I'm actually wanting to read this. I want to see this evolution of Scott Summers as the fanatic Anyway, I, I want to see that, and, and, and I've heard that perhaps the Uncanny X-Men and All New X-Men are kind of like bookends to the same kind of story um, or, the, or an examination of the Scott Summers character at the very least. So it would be an interesting way to, to uh, juxtapose the younger Scott Summers here in modern times where his future self, or present self I should say, um, is doing the things he's doing. And just how those two relate, you know, those two meeting will be an interesting story, um, I would think. Anyway, uh, Fearless Defenders number one is also solicited here by written by Colin Bunn, Will Slinney doing the art. Uh, this is the the uh, female characters book. Um, I'll try that one out. When I heard that New Avengers was ending along with a bunch of other titles uh, for the Marvel Now relaunches coming up, I was going to drop New Avengers. Um, I've really enjoyed New Avengers out of all of the books, all of the Avengers books. Um, you know, I've read New Avengers, Mighty Avengers. I've read a little bit of Avengers. But but for some reason, New Avengers really captured my, my, my attention, and I've been with it since, uh, since I discovered it. Um, and so I was going to drop it, and then... Uh, a couple months ago when they solicited New Avengers number one w featuring the characters of the Illuminati with um, Black Panther joining and the Beast taking Professor X's role um, this and written by Jonathan Hickman um, I had to get it so I just want to mention I, I'm getting that one uh, Secret Avengers number one written by Nick Spencer with Luke Ross on art that's coming out and I, I think this is the final Avengers, I think, maybe. Uh, note, Avengers number three. Uh, and I only mention this because there's this great two-page art spread. Um, I think it's a variant. It's a 50th anniversary of the Avengers variant by Daniel Acuna. It looks really cool. It says here, uh, Celebrate the Avengers 50th anniversary all year long with 12 stunning variant covers. I hope they mean that there's one variant per month, but probably it's 12 variant covers per issue. <laughs> Another book I'm getting, I, I pre-ordered last month, Young Avengers. That Marvel Now Point One um, got me on board with Young Avengers. I was to 
this that that title was totally not on my radar and then I read the little piece in Marvel Now Point One and I'm like okay I'll try it out anyway uh, this is written by Kieran Gillen, Gillen and, uh, and Jamie McKelvey on art so looks pretty good uh, the preview art I mean if you were a fan of the Alpha storyline that three part storyline uh, in Spider Man now you get the Alpha miniseries number one of five by Joshua Hill Fialkov and uh, Nuno Platy. Yeah, I, I I wanted to check out this whole Spider Man has a sidekick thing, and so I got those three issues of Spider Man. Um, but you know, the, and I, I appreciate the the Dan Slott's take on this um, you know kid who suddenly has cosmic powers basically, and he, he kind of becomes a jerk. And of course, his powers get taken away, but you know they're they're slowly coming back, and apparently that's what they're going to address in this. I would think um, it just it didn't appeal to me whatsoever, so I won't be getting that. Ah, here we go. I mentioned before there's this, uh, a series that I wanted to uh, highlight, I guess, and that is Hawkeye. So Hawkeye number eight, and and it's not really the solicitation for for that particular issue, but. Um, I just wanted to to make note. Um, I, I when Hawkeye was first listed, I thought, oh, they're just trying to you know somehow capture uh, the Avengers movie uh, viewing audience in some way. Um, and then I started hearing the buzz about how good this series was, and so like a week before issue number five came out. I went to the comic shop that I go to and determined to find as many issues uh, of that as I could. Because uh, four, uh, one through four obviously had come out before then. They had one through three, um, and I took this home and read them. And I'm like, oh my god, what a good book! What a good book! It, in some ways, the art style and just the the storytelling about the character. Um, reminds me of the the Bendis Daredevil to a certain degree, but it's just it's really good. It's it's got an interesting color palette. Um, uh, I love how uh, you know Hawkeye Clint is hearing people talk, you know, in French or or. German or I don't care, and, and it's and you know it, it's it's a cute little thing because in the dialogue box it says something in German or you know something in French or whatever um, instead of you know, instead of actually having French and not knowing what it is it's just you know Clint in Clint's mind is just I I'm hearing someone speak French uh, it's, and th- little things like that it's just it's just really cute I love the the audacious nature of of the storytelling and the the, the situations that Clint. Uh, and the other characters are are in. It's just it's just fun. It's a fun comic. I never thought I'd say that about a Hawkeye series. Uh, here we go. the The return of P- the Power series. Um, I'm not sure quite sure what happened to that. Other than I know uh, Brian Michael Bendis was just busy doing stuff, and uh, Michael Avon Emming also busy. Um, that you know that that volume of Powers that was out before Powers Bureau. Uh, just kind of disappeared, and then they announced that they were going to do Powers colon FBI, and then finally, and it was supposed to come out. God, I think back in September, I think maybe. Anyway, um, apparently they decided to wait to release it, and now it's finally being solicited as Powers Bureau, and you get number one and two solicited in this month's previews. We'll see how that goes. I'm not a big fan of Mar- some of Mark Miller's work, uh, but for some reason his superior with Laniel Yu, just, I don't know, something about that made me want to read it. Um, and so here's the trade, and so I'll probably pick that up at some point. I'm There's so many things that I'm picking up, I don't know that I'm going to be able to afford everything that I want to get this, this month. So fortunately trades, I can I can get those down the road, hopefully. So let's move on uh, to the other publishers in previews. I remember hearing about Aspen's 10 for 10, um, 10, 10 new titles coming up in the, in the new year. And 
here's the first one and it's only a dollar and this is uh, Legend of the Shadow Clan by David Wall and art by Corey Smith colors by John Starr it's their 10 year anniversary kicks off with this from Avatar Press there are two books here that um, I just want to mention uh, mostly because I read one of these and I want to read the other uh, the first is uh, Freak Angels, the Complete Collection Slipcase Edition for $99.99. This is uh, the Warren Ellis series that was free on the web. And I read that on the web each and every week and really enjoyed that series. It was, it was, a, it was a, a nice story. Um, I'm really curious how the... If you haven't read Freak Angels, um, I still believe you can... Is it... Is it still available on the web? I'm going to check that out right now. Hold on. Yes, it is. It's still online. Um, but you can get the uh, the trades if you prefer that. And then next, uh, I wanted to mention Alan Moore's Writing for Comics. It says graphic novel um, for five ninety nine. Hmm. Five ninety nine. I'm. I might pick that up. I. I know I was a little lippy about Alan Moore earlier. But as I said, the guy knows how to write, so I'm, I'm really curious to see what he has to say about writing for comics. Um, I have a few books along those lines already. You know, I still have that dream that one day I would I would uh, write for comics, although I'm not so sure that I'd want to do that, considering the behind-the-scenes stuff that we are now more privy to than uh, I was when I was a weed lad first getting into comics, where you basically didn't know anything. Uh, now you know, I think, too much sometimes, but some of that's good to know, obviously, but uh, yeah, it kind of puts a bad taste in your mouth, I'll say. Um, anyway, I, so I, I may pick that up for five ninety nine if I can get it cheap online. Here's a trade that I, w I will want to read um, because I missed out on, on uh, the series when it first launched. You know, sometimes I I look at my order and I think oh that's way too much money so I start pulling things off even though I know I want to read that story read that issue read that title and this is one of those that I did pull off uh, and that's Danny Abnett and Andy Lanning's The Hypernaturals the first volume uh, out in trade for $16.99 let's see collects the free comic book day edition which I did read and issues one to three really that's it those are Three issues and the free comic book day issue um, for seventeen dollars, one hundred twenty-eight pages. So, wow, those 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 issues must have been what thirty-two pages each, ish. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they had a double size issue or something. I don't know, but that that seems really light. Three issues and a free comic book day, which is not that much. Uh, I could be wrong. Here's another miniseries. This is from uh, Dynamite Entertainment. I just uh, got off of a... Uh, the first, Well, I, I dropped The Shadow, the, the, the new series, after six issues. Uh, I enjoyed it well enough. Just, you know, it was just... It was okay. Um, wasn't really exciting, but uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad either. It was, it was well written. I liked the art. I just, you know, that character just never... has never really been that interesting to me. But here we have The Shadow Year One, it's an eight-issue miniseries written by Matt Wagner, which right there, that gets my attention. Uh, Wilfredo Torres is doing the art, and a bunch of people doing covers. Three ninety-nine. Uh, I'm tempted, just because I like I kind of like those origin stories, and Matt Wagner's doing it, so... Oni Press is finally releasing the um, Sixth Gun, Sons of the Gun... I believe that was supposed to be a mini series. All it says is number one. So anyway, but it's an untold tale of the of the six. Since the very first issue of the Six Gun, readers have clamored for more information about General Hume's horsemen, and now the story can be told. Uh, so that's of course written by Colin Bunn and Brian Hurt, with artist Brian Chirilla, colorist Bill Crabtree. Yep, I'm getting that. That's uh, Six Guns. Always an entertaining read. Alan Moore has raised his Hydra head yet again, um, but this time in the Nemo Heart of Ice hardcover, continuing um, a new League of Extraordinary Gentlemen story. 
uh, full color 48 page adventure in the classic pulp tradition. Um, it's 1925. Since uh, Jenny Dakar first tried to escape the legacy of her dying science, science pirate father only to accept her destiny as the new Nemo, captain of the legendary Nautilus. So you get that story. That's 15 bucks. That's actually not a bad price. You know, I, I I read these extraordinary League of Extraordinary Gentlemen stuff in trade, so I'll wait for that. Uh to Valiant, continuing their 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 wonderful relaunch. I plan to do a um, an examination of the books of theirs that I, which is all of them right now, um, that I'm reading. But uh, here we go. We get Harbinger number zero, and yeah, I can I can go off on my rant about zero issues. But this is a a prequel, I guess. Um, Examining uh, Toyo Harada, the CEO of Harada Global Conglomerates. So you have that. And then you get the beginning of the first epic, as they say, Exo Man of War event with uh, issue number 10 coming out. Um, that right now, Exo Man of War is probably my favorite of the Valiant series. So I'm looking forward to that. And that does it for the comics, uh, but since it being December, Christmas time, holiday season, gift giving, and all that, uh, there's a bunch of other things I wanted to point out. Some books and toys and other things. And the first thing I, that just uh, caught my eye here is the Doctor Who Character Compendium Hardcover. You get in detailed character profiles of all 11 regenerations of the Doctor, as well as profiles of his many companions and adventures. For sixteen ninety nine, ninety six 96 pages. I love those kind of books. And if I had more money and I wasn't spending so much on comics, I'd be buying some of those. And uh, I believe there's a bunch of Star Trek stuff I'll mention. And the first two are the Star Trek The Visual Dictionary hardcover. And that's for $20 for 96 pages. Hold on. Hold on. Let me go back here to that Doctor Who thing. Yes, also 96 pages. Oh, it's slightly bigger. The Star Trek one is 9 by 12. The Doctor Who one is 7 by 10. I guess that's not too bad of a price difference. Um, but you get the... It charts each and every one of the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, um, covering all six television series with full coverage of the favorite characters, such as... Well, you know who your favorite characters are. And... Ooh, see, now this is what gets me. Full color pictures of ships. Uh, that says here, that would make James T. Kirk proud. And the, the the Star Trek ships, that's, I mean, yes, great stories, great characters, blah, blah, blah. I love the ships. I love the uh, Federation ships, especially. The Enterprise, I, I love that. I just love the look of that ship. Anyway, uh, next is Stuck on Star Trek hardcover. Um, this is interesting. Um, 8 by 10, 10 pages for $20, 1995. Uh, but this is, it says here, an interactive and imaginative imaginative way to experience the Star Trek universe using the magic of, quote, cling on pieces. Get it? Cling on? Trekkies and fans of all ages can set their phasers to fun. I really hate it when they do that. <laughs> set their phasers to fun. Okay. As they reenact their favorite scenes from the original Star Trek universe or create new uncharted scenarios. Stuck on Star Trek features 10 original and instantly recognizable scenes, as well as alien environments, which set the stage for more than 30 reusable, quote, Klingon stickers featuring everyone's favorite Starfleet crew. I really, I kind of want to get that. <laughs> I had something like that, but it was Battlestar Galactica, I think, from the late 1970s. Where it was uh, not not Klingon. I'm sure it wasn't this Klingon stuff that they're talking about, but it was a magnetic set, and you could you could put the uh, like Adama and Apollo and Starbuck and the Cylons, and you just kind of make up your own. You know, put the pieces on the the metal backing, and then um, you know, I guess make your own stories. Anyway, I had that. I thought it was cool, so it reminded me of that. Uh, here's here's the first shirt I wanted to to mention. You know, who doesn't like their t-shirts. Uh, this is the Doctor Who uh, Angel of Liberty black t-shirt. It's a previews exclusive wear. If you're a fan of Doctor Who and you watch the uh, mid-season finale, then you know what this Angel of Liberty uh, is all about. It's kind of neat looking. It'd be a, a different kind of shirt to wear, as well as, I guess, you know, now that I'm looking at it, 
wasn't going to mention it earlier, but but the the Joker Death T-shirt from Graffiti Designs, and you see the Joker's you know smile, his laugh, and it's sort of a, a outline in red with a sort of a bat uh, outline. So that's kind of cool. And not that I want this T-shirt, but the image of it makes me want to ask, and, and I am asking you, if, if uh, any listeners out there know, so here is the uh, Mad Engine t-shirts, uh, Marvel t-shirt. There's a Shade of Venom t-shirt, and it features um, Venom in the background in black with Spider-Man and Spider-Woman back-to-back uh, looking like they're they're fighting, getting ready to fight Venom. So my question is, is this from a story? Is this from uh, an arc or something? in Spider-Man somewhere, you know, from years past or even more recently, because I don't read Spider-Man all the time. Just every once in a while I'll pick up a, like like that alpha arc, I pick that up. So if there was a an arc, a story, even a one, even a one-issue story where Spider-Man and Spider-Woman fought Venom, I'd like to know what that is because I'd like to go find that. Uh, also, uh, yeah, from Graffiti Designs is, I thought this was cute, uh, the Rat Pack, Rat Creature, T-shirt it says Rat Pack on the in the in the, the ad here, but the Rat Creature T-shirt from Bone. So you get you get the you know the the, the Rat Creatures with the big red eyes and the fangs. You get that. I, I thought that was kind of cool that Bone it has a T-shirt. Um, also, let's see, is this from Graffiti or somebody else? I don't know. They're not very good about. Just as apparel. Anyway, uh, there's a couple of shirts here. There's a Star Trek shirt that has the Enterprise on it. I thought that was neat looking. This is on page 376 of previews. And on the next page, you know, the funny, um, you know, the the whole red shirt joke, Star Trek. Uh, again, here, so here's a here's a t-shirt with um, uh, a a red shirt crewman, and the the text says "Dead Man Walking." <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Funny if you like Star Trek. And as far as collectibles go, we have a, yet another nice-looking art effects statue. This time, the New 52 Batman looks really cool. I I had posted on the blog uh, a picture of the the Superman art effects statue that just looks gorgeous. Um, and every one of these that have come out so far, I haven't I haven't yet ordered one, but man, I'm so tempted. But Forty-five dollars. Uh, that's a little pricey for me for for something like that. But they look good. And speaking of Batman and his Justice League friends, well, some of them anyway. Uh, if you have a iPhone, the uh, what do they call it? Kara covers. Uh, you can get iPhone covers anyway. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, which is an exclusive. I guess a comic market exclusive. Although I don't know why would they do that. Um, why would you not want to sell more of those? Anyway, um, the Joker, Harley Quinn, and Batgirl. These are thirty-five dollars. They're they're just cute. Uh, but uh, you know, Marvel's not to be not re- not represented. So you have you have six of those for Marvel. You have Spider Man, Iron Man, Venom, which is the exclusive. Uh, Thor, Captain America, and Wolverine in his blue and yellow suit. So, yes, very cute. I mentioned Battlestar Galactica earlier. Uh, here is a... You know how they're doing uh, USB sticks in these weird... Uh, not weird, but uh, actual... They don't look like USB sticks. Their they're models are, you know... They actually look like something, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. So you get a Battlestar Galactica Viper 8 gigabyte USB stick. Um, I'm trying to see from the picture where you would plug it in, but uh, <laughs> it looks just like a Viper, uh, which looks pretty cool. And here we are getting to the end of previews. Uh, I mentioned earlier how I have bought the uh, Young Justice DVDs that are, have been released so far. Well, here you get uh, the solicitation for Young Justice Invasion, Destiny Calling, which is the Season 2 Part 1 DVD. Uh, that's for $20. And I'll get that eventually. I I wanted to wait on the Young Justice DVDs like I did with, with the uh, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, where they finally 
release them all as you know you know quote unquote seasons so i have the three seasons of of those shows um but for some reason i decided to with cuz it's weird the way they they it's not weird i i know why they do it they're trying to get as much money as they can but they release like these sets you know so you get like i don't know four three four five maybe six episodes per set and then they just and they release that and they release the next set and then they come out with a like like what i bought finally was a three three pack says three pack fun on the dvd but it's it's basically the first season of young justice um and then i got the young the first young justice invasion part as well so um here's the season two part one so maybe they'll come out with the full su- season two of young justice uh, which i hope to god is not the last and I believe, is this the, yes, this is the, yep, it is the last thing uh, that I wanted to point out in previews. Uh, it's a documentary DVD being released on Blu-ray, it looks like, and it is Comic Book Confidential, the 20th anniversary edition. Um, it's a feature-length documentary that profiles 22 of the most significant artists and writers working in comic books, graphic novels, and strip art in North America today. Um, interesting. It's the 20th anniversary edition. So are they? Is it actually updated? I don't think so. The 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 folks on the cover art here, you got Will Eisner, Robert Crumb, Stan Lee, uh, Will Gaines, Frank Miller, Harvey Kurtzman, Jack Kirby. Um, can't make out some of these other names. Art Spiegelman, Jaime Hernandez. So you know a bunch of those people. So. I you know this I I have this or had a version of this on VHS and enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh but uh so here's the 20th anniversary edition but you can get it on Blu-ray for 25 bucks. And that is it. That's my look at uh, the previous catalog for December 2012 for things shipping starting in February. Um hopefully, you know, uh we'll we'll be able to actually get those things that we order this month if the Mayan calendar uh, turns out to be wrong. <laughs> um, and, you know, there's some great ideas here uh, as gifts for people that you know that, that like comics and other pop culture things. So there you go. Um, please remember to contact me at longboxreview at gmail.com. You can also contact me through the new uh, voicemail number, which I gave at the beginning, but is now, I'll give it to you again, which is 208 208- Nine five three, eighteen forty one. You can also me- uh, contact me through Twitter, leave messages on Facebook, and as well as the blog at longboxreview.wordpress.com. This will be the last episode uh, for 2012. Um, so you won't hear from me until sometime in January, at least through the podcast. Uh, I'll still be posting things on the blog, though, so you can check that out, and I'll be checking Twitter and tweeting stuff and reading and enjoying comics, and I will leave you with that. Go do that yourself. Thanks for listening.